International Airport. They played a role in 9-11. When all the planes were grounded and the airspace was closed down, Gander could take a lot of international flights going across the Atlantic Ocean. They had a ton of planes just landed in Gander for days, and their population of their city went from 9,000 and they added 7,000 people essentially overnight. So the whole town kind of had to come together and I guess pool their resources to accommodate all these people. The story was so moving that there was a musical made about it. Not often that you see Newfoundland have a connection to places, uh, especially New York. So that's kind of the uh, interesting to be on with Gander, with Gander Tower just then. Went from Gander to Deer Lake and we got fuel. Then we departed northbound. It looks good here, but the ceiling directly north was probably around 700 feet. So we flipped a Huey, came back this way, and we're just waiting and waiting the weather out. We fell asleep in the helicopter and the poor person that was working at the FBO was trying to shut down. And she was like, I didn't want to knock on the bubble, but it's right at night. <laughs> so we're like, okay, so we kicked out of the airport. But she rented a car for us, so that was nice. And um, I think we're just gonna get some chicken wings. Man, it's been a while since I've been in this airport. Yeah, tasting wings. Coming from Buffalo and getting wings in Newfoundland. Yeah, but winging it is like the best. Yeah, I do love a good wing from winging it. Yeah, we're a disgrace when it comes to Buffalonians and wings, but what odds? Heli trip turned car trip. Worst case scenario, if we get stuck here, for a couple of days, if we can rent the car for a couple of days, there's actually this is the best place on the island to be stuck because all of the things that you want to see are really around here. Yeah, I suppose we could go. Uh, we could go to Grossmore if you wanted. Yeah, sick. I'm gonna get the four flavor two pound combo platter. Get the boneyard. It's not the only one I want to eat. We're staying in a B and B. Bed, desk. <laughs> That's a table. Life, bathroom. bathroom. Tea time. Plan, Stan. I'm gonna drink this tea and then I wanna go straight to bed. I don't know why I'm so tired. It's a good thing we didn't go east and try to get to St. John's. There's a whole Avalon Peninsula covered in weather with low IFR conditions. It's nine in the morning now. We have basically till sunset to try to make it really only about an hour and a half, two hours flight time. We're going to try to make it up to Carpoon Island today. We've got a couple of things on our list that we wanted to do before we head back to the island. I feel like we've been trying to just rush to destination to destination. We haven't really had time to kind of explore the island. So we have the better part of the day just to fly the one and a half hours. So I think we're going to use this as an opportunity just to grab some photos, just to explore a little bit, just land in some cool spots. Ready to go? We just got to make sure that we stay on course because fuel's not as tight as it was on the Quebec coast, but we don't have an abundance of it. So.
never seen anything like this. It's like goddamn Jurassic Park. This is like Lord of the Rings shit. All right, so this is Parsons Pond. It's just north of Grossmore National Park. So we talked to Parks Canada about getting a waiver. We kind of are, as you know, flying by the seat of our pants with no itinerary. So it was very difficult to nail anything down. And ultimately we thought, you know what? This whole island is so beautiful. There is so much more around this province. This is proof here that that's true. And this is outside of a national park. It's just in the middle of nowhere uh, in Newfoundland. And we can fly as low as we want here. This is absolutely amazing. Yeah, gorgeous. Little beaches down here. Did you just say? Gorgeous. Because ah. it's a gorge. <laughs> oh. Okay, I'll, I'll shut this off. So we found these beautiful gorges just north of the park on the west coast of the island, flying around here, getting some amazing footage, taking in all the sights. So we landed on this rock. I guess this is kind of a rock on top of a waterfall, so it ticks off those two items that I wanted to land next to or on. We've departed Deer Lake about an hour ago, and we have the whole day basically to try to make it up north. And depending on weather, we're gonna go try to get to St. Anthony and then on to Carpoon Island. The weather in St. Anthony all morning was IFR conditions. And if we can't get back up to Carpoon Island today, we may have to just cross it off our list. But you know, as the Newfoundlanders say, dims to breaks. Is that a saying, right? That's a saying, right? Anyway, we may be able to go iceberg hunting though because about three days ago there was an iceberg that was reported up just 20 minutes north of Blanc de Blanc. I have no idea where the day will take us. So why don't we fire up here? Doors are back on, let's fire up and uh, take in some more of these gorges and make our way up the northern peninsula. So we just departed Blanc Sablon again, full fuel, and it looks like the ceilings have lifted. Called Carpoon, the lighthouse in, and they said that the fog was still there, but it was lifting and it was kind of half gone, half still there. So go up the uh, coast here now and try to see if this iceberg is still at Red Bay. It's about a 20 minute flight from Blanc Sablon. We're just about halfway there now, but it looks like some of these inlets here, there's some tight either fog or cloud cover directly hugging the land or the water. So tough to say if we're going to be able to see the iceberg. If we don't, well. Is that it? Oh, there it is. crazy side. I'm so glad we got to see that. Yeah, it was so cool. Just the emerald green color in the of the iceberg just under the surface of the water. Oh, I love that. Anyway, so we're about 20 minutes away from Carpoon. I've never been here before, obviously. Becky's never been here before. They told me the helipad's going to be obvious uh, when we see it. We're coming up on the end of our trip here now, so we really wanted to get it on the, on the road in the air by Monday at the latest to start our journey back. Yeah. We want to have a few days to decompress and unwind after this trip because this trip has been exhausting. Oh my God, I'm so tired. I've never been so tired. It's really windy up here. It's a bit bumpier. I can't believe we lived here for our whole entire life and never once came up here. I know. I we always said it though, like you take where you live for granted. Absolutely. People come to where you live as a tourist destination and you just don't see it. Like when we were living in Vancouver, how many people at work, they saw all the adventures would be going on, 
every weekend, and they'd be like, oh my god, you've seen more of Vancouver and, B and British Columbia than I've seen in my entire life. That's true. You spend time in a place, and you don't know when that time is going to end, and we always thought we would be here forever. Yep. And we didn't end up here forever. And now, coming back almost as like a tourist and not somebody who lives here, it's like you appreciate the province or what the province has to offer, whereas before you kind of think about the negative stuff and the doom and gloom and work. And so hopefully we can make it up there because it looks like the fog is hugging around those rocks up here. Oh shit, yeah, there is fog on the horizon. Oh man, if we don't make this. Oh my god. <laughs> We're, this, I think this is probably the most northern tip of Newfoundland. Wow. Oh, wow. What Holy a shit. Insane view. There's the lighthouse. The fog literally just blew in. It's like a race to get to the helipad. Oh my god, are we going to make it to the helipad with, before the fog comes in? What the... Our trip has come to an end. This is our last stop. I'm actually glad that this is our last stop because I feel like this was definitely a highlight from a visual perspective. This place really embodies everything that is Newfoundland. You have the ocean, whales, icebergs, cliff faces, and I think that's why this place is so special and why it's such a great place to end off the trip. Tune in next episode of Becky and Chris trying to fly their helicopter to a lighthouse, car through lighthouse. Will they make it or is it too much fun? Check out that time. Oh my god. What'd you find? Sick old plaid. Oh, honey's a small for sure. <laughs> yeah, she's, she's a bit a, big. She's a bit big. The one that got away. The one that got away, man. It is actually pretty ideal. It's like the right color. It's got new flannel. It's got new flannel on, on it. I'm going the opposite direction that the GPS is telling me to. Because you don't play by the rules. Hey, yo, welcome to MTV Cribs. <laughs> Better drinking tea in a, in a B and B than camping on the side of a cliff in the cold rain. Sure, could have made tea up there too. <laughs> Okay, we're getting packed up. Why were this closed? Uh, is there something, is my camera bag in the way? Are you pressing the button in your pocket? Episode turns to shit when we have no idea what's going on. <laughs>